Today we're going to introduce the concept of the geostrophic wind. Uh, the geostrophic wind is the wind that would result if uh, the wind were balanced, uh, the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force were balanced. Um, the geostrophic wind is denoted as VG. Um, the VG is going to be uh, parallel to the isobars. It's going to be strongest where the isobars are tightest, where we have the strongest pressure gradient. Uh, the geostrophic wind uh, cannot exist uh, at the equator, uh, and it's also a very good approximation for the actual winds above the, 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 the planetary boundary layer and outside of the tropics. And we're going to look mathematically as to why that might be the case. So mathematically, the geostrophic wind uh, is given as 1 over density times the Coriolis parameter, which is 2 omega sine phi, where phi is latitude times k hat cross uh, the gradient of pressure. Um, last time we saw that the gradient of pressure um, could be transformed into an expression that shows the geostrophic wind in terms of the gradient of the geopotential and in terms of the gradient of the geopotential height. So we now have three different ways uh, to describe the geostrophic wind, the magnitude of the geostrophic wind and the direction of the geostrophic wind um, all we need to know is either the pressure gradient or the uh, gradient of the geopotential or the gradient of the geopotential height. Of course, this nomenclature uh, needs to be expanded into its components so that you can see uh, all of the things that go into the geostrophic wind. So remember that the gradient of pressure, partial P over partial X in the I hat plus partial P over partial Y in the J hat and partial P over partial Z in the K hat. You do the K cross, the K cross J, so the K cross the J will put me in the minus I direction, so K cross J partial P over partial Y in the minus I hat direction, and if you do K cross I, K cross I, you'll end up in the positive J direction for the partial P over partial X, and of course the K cross K term goes to zero, which is why it doesn't show up here. Uh, we can go ahead and distribute the 1 over the density times the Coriolis parameter, and you'll get um, the I component uh, of the geostrophic wind as partial P over partial Y times this uh, prefactor, and the Y component, or the north-south component, is partial P over partial X. Um, so let's take a look at this, for example, um, to find out um, why um, VG cannot exist at the equator. Well, at the equator, f is equal to zero. If f is equal to zero, then this term explodes and you can never have a balance of the two forces. So here we have a high and a low pressure in the uh, northern hemisphere. The pressure gradient force wants to move the air parcels from high towards low, but the Coriolis force is going to deflect uh, those air parcels to the right uh, in the uh, northern hemisphere. And so we'll end up with a uh, clockwise rotation around the high and a counterclockwise rotation around the low. And the strength of the geostrophic wind is controlled by the pressure gradient, where the isobars are packed tightly. That's where the pressure gradient is the strongest. And that is where the geostrophic wind is the strongest. Uh, when you have uh, isobars that are far apart, that's where your uh, gradient is weakest and that's where the geostrophic wind will be weakest. <clears throat> so let's take a look at how this balance between the Coriolis force and the pressure gradient force actually arrives. So we'll start off with the situation here where we have a high pressure to the south, a low pressure to the north, 1,000 hectopascal uh, isobar, the 999 hectopascal um, isobar, and we have an air parcel that is initially not moving. So it's initially static. It has a pressure gradient force on this, uh, that pressure gradient force um, would want to push this air parcel from the high towards the low. But since the Coriolis force depends upon the velocity of the air parcel, um, this air parcel doesn't have a velocity, so the Coriolis force is zero. So this air parcel is going to respond by moving from high towards low. But as soon as it has a positive velocity vector, then the Coriolis force will start to act to the right of that motion. So we have an air parcel at some time later in the future 
um, that now has a velocity. It's no longer pointing directly from high to low because it's being deflected by the Coriolis force, which is acting at a right angle to it, to the right in the northern hemisphere. Um, this is still not a balanced force diagram, so the air parcel will still be accelerating somewhat towards the low. Uh, and eventually, once the velocity gets great enough, the Coriolis force is great enough that it will be exactly equal and opposite to the pressure gradient force. Um, in this situation, the net force on our air parcel is zero, and it will be moving along with a horizontal velocity that's equal to the geostrophic wind, Vg. Uh, in this case, the, uh, at this force balance, the geostrophic wind will be blowing parallel to those isobars. So in this particular example, uh, I'll say that we have 100 kilometers between these two isobars, and that will allow us to calculate the pressure gradient associated with it. In this example, uh, north, east, south, west, partial P over partial X. There is no pressure change in the I-hat direction. So partial P over partial X is going to be equal to uh, zero. And partial P over partial Y uh, is going to be essentially a decrease in the pressure. So it's going to be uh, minus one hectopascal per 100 kilometers. And we have to convert hectopascals to pascals. Um, so for every one hectopascal, there's 100 pascals. And it's per 100 kilometers. We need to convert that to meters. Uh, one kilometer is a thousand meters, results in a pressure gradient of minus 0 0.001 pascals per meter. The Coriolis parameter F is equal to 2 omega sine phi. If we let this example be at 45 degrees north, um, omega is 7.272 times 10 to the minus fifth radians per second. Um, the sine of 45 uh, is uh, we can go ahead and do that 0.7 something, and you'll end up with a Coriolis parameter of 1.0284 times 10 to the minus fourth. Um, we go back, put a, re a density reminiscent of sea level, um, about 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed, multiply that by our Coriolis parameter F uh, in the denominator and the numerator. We have the pressure gradient, um, 0 0.001 uh, pascals. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, the Vg is equal to minus uh, partial P over partial Y. So we had a minus out here, and we had a minus pressure gradient, giving us a positive uh, velocity for Vg of 7.94 meters per second. And all of that is going to be in the i-hat direction. The partial P over partial Y is in the i-hat direction. So um, this example here uh, ended up with a geostrophic wind of about 7.94 meters per second uh, in the east direction. Now, you can imagine a situation where you have vertical isobars that are oriented north-south. In that case, your partial P over partial Y would be zero, and your partial P over partial X would not. But in the real world, we have isobars that are in all sorts of different configurations. So you're, uh, in the real world, you're always going to have a non-zero partial P over partial X and a non-zero partial P over partial Y uh, for most of those. So the geostrophic wind is a great approximation for the wind speeds above the boundary layer, uh, above the planetary boundary layer, where friction is not an important uh, component of the force balance of this air parcel. But what's interesting about this, if we have a high pressure and a low pressure here, the only way to change the strength of those air of those uh, highs and lows is to add mass to the high or remove mass from the high, and likewise to do the same thing for the low pressure. Um, as long as the wind, the in this case the geostrophic wind, is parallel to the isobars, there's no cross isobaric flow, and as a result, there's no way for the high to experience divergence and there's no way for the low to experience convergence. And in a purely geostrophic atmosphere, the high and low pressure systems can never change in strength. Um, they would basically just move around the planet uh, and they would never be able to get stronger or weaker. 
Um, and then clearly that's not realistic. That's not what happens because of the uh, entrance of uh, importance of friction in the boundary layer. Uh, and um, we will start looking at friction next. But now we have a mathematical way to describe um, to a first order approximation the horizontal wind speed and direction uh, in the Earth's atmosphere. 